Happy Friday. We've made it to the week. Well, we're not there yet. We're almost there. It is Friday, 3rd day of March, 2023. I am Dan Koontz. This is Wake Up in Anchee Valley. Thanks for starting your day with us. Uh, it is overcast, 27 degrees outside of our studio. Sun's going to be taking the weekend off. We're going to be some cloudy uh, conditions, cooler than normal temperatures. A stray snowflake or raindrop will pay us a visit with snow, more snow. In the mountain passes, I'll start out with this right now. If you're traveling on Stevens Pass, or planning to anyway, uh, they're going to shut Stevens Pass down in one hour at 8 o'clock this morning for avalanche control work. They have gotten a lot of snow on Stevens Pass. In fact, you'll have winter driving conditions on all of the mountain passes pretty much all weekend long. And again, kind of cool, unsettled, typical March weather. We finally got up to our normal high temperature yesterday. We hit 48 on uh, Thursday, which was where we should be. So we've had that long, cool period, popped up to 48. That was an anomaly going back down the other direction for our afternoon highs. Forecast details are coming up. A lot of news to get to, lots of sports to get to. Eric and his camera went to the Town Toyota Center last night to check out the very first game in the franchise history of the Wenatchee Bighorns. They played. They played well. We got highlights of that. Uh, Kraken gave up a big lead, but they pulled it out. And everything that happened yesterday at the Hardwood Classic with their local teams in Yakima and Spokane. Speaking of sports, Mitch Darlington, my guest in the back half of the program, the head coach of the Wenatchee Apple Sox, are starting to bring in all of the uh, collegiate players. They'll be making up the roster for the 2023 Wenatchee Apple Sox. They had a great year last year. They're bringing back a lot of good players. Mitch will join me in the back half of the program. Love talking baseball with that guy because that's my sport. And we didn't get a chance to do Paws for Pets yesterday. We just plumb run out of time, so we'll do it today. You're going to meet Clara the dog about the bottom of the hour. And let's start with our tour around North Central Washington. There is the Wenatchee Heights camera. It is uh, zoomed back a little bit on our PTZ cameras. In fact, you can see one of the support towers there to your left. Don't go up there. First of all, uh, it's covered in snow. And second of all, it's private property. So, you know, there's a little respect there. I'll leave that stuff alone. Besides, why do you need to go up there when you can do that? Just look at it. Sunrise this morning, 637. Sunset tonight, 549. We're getting almost two minutes of daylight now. Uh, each additional day, we'd like that. We're up to 11 hours and 12 minutes of daylight today. We're heading on up to Bear Mountain and take a look at Lake Chelan. And it looks something like that. Good morning, Lake Chelan. You can see Wapato Point sticking out there from our Bear Mountain camera. Uh, high above the Bear Mountain golf course. That's how it got its name. That's a great track, by the way, Bear Mountain, especially the back nine. I really like it. To Leavenworth, let's check in with the Tumwater. Did you see Grant's uh, weather report last night? They've had something like 112 inches of accumulation of snow total this year in Leavenworth. A lot. That is just ridiculous. Or maybe it's even more than that. Leavenworth is a, has a tendency to get more snow, but they have gotten a lot of snow this year. And it's not over yet, Leavenworth. You're going to get a couple of inches this weekend. And Billy Gill will check in as we say hello to our friends up to the north of us. Beautiful view there. Stunning. Probably my favorite camera. Either between that or maybe Black Mountain. Probably my two favorite cameras because there's just there's so much real estate you can see there. Your weekend outlook looks something like that. Uh, moderate to heavy snow in the mountain passes for the rest of the day today. Stevens is going to get 3 to 7 inches today, 2 to 4 inches tonight, then not much over the weekend. I-90 still quality, 3 to 7 inches today, about 1 to 3 inches tonight, and a little snow on Blewett today, but most of the snow on Blewett will be tomorrow. You're not going to get it, be able to get away from, from winter driving conditions if you're heading up into the Cascades. And down here in the lower elevations on the valley floor, we're going to have a mixture of rain and snow at times. Best chance of measurable snow probably Sunday mid-afternoon or so. So unseasonably cool uh, throughout the weekend and maybe a little windy at times. Apple Valley Honda is the sponsor for the National Weather Service. Here we go. We have a slight chance of rain or snow showers. It's already fairly cloudy and the clouds will be thickening up as the day progresses. We'll top off at about 44 and a little breezy at times. A slight chance of a rain-snow mix overnight tonight. Should be high and dry, mostly cloudy, and a low of 26. You see there's no sunshine at all in that forecast, graphically speaking, until we get to Wednesday. Clouds are going to be everywhere. All of these temperatures below normal with a rain-snow mix on Saturday and a high of only 40. We should be at 48. 37, quite chilly on Sunday. Sunday is our best chance of measurable snow. We could get a couple of inches right here in Wenatchee. It's possible. 
it won't stick around, but it's still possible. Then we headed into the full work week with lots of clouds and cold temperatures, at least cold, all things being relative, certainly well below normal. So we've had a long period of cool temperatures. Yesterday, we popped up to normal. Ain't gonna happen for the next seven days. So there you go. It's gonna feel more like uh, early February than early March. Gonna take a break, and when we come back, we'll have your headlines. It's Friday edition of Wake Up in Angie Valley on the NCW Life Channel. I had had a seizure in the middle of the night and they rushed me to the hospital and decided um, to induce labor to try to get the baby out. The outpouring of love and support I got from Confluence Health. My coworkers coming to the ICU to be with me. For me, it's the work family. It's just incredible to have support no matter what I'm going through in my personal life, my, my own health. Central Washington Water is your solution for problem water. Whether you're on a well or municipal water, they can design a clean water system custom to you. Soft water eliminates water spots and scaling on fixtures. It protects appliances from hard water damage, saving you money. Soft water reduces soap usage that causes skin irritation and is a healthier choice to drink. Call for a free in-home consultation or stop by the store to have your water tested. Central Washington Water, your best water solution for home, pool, and spa. Seven minutes after the hour, fairly clear skies right now. We're sitting at 25 degrees as the day progresses. The clouds will be rolling in and they're going to stick around for quite some time with unsettled, cloudy and cool weather right through the weekend and into next week. Rape charges against a Wenatchee man have been dismissed after four years without a trial. 58-year-old Stephen Adam Tibbetts was arrested back in 2019 on allegations that he drugged, photographed, and sexually assaulted a woman while she could not consent. Tibbetts' attorney, Brandon Redall, argued that prosecutors had still not provided him with all the evidence collected in the case, including any data from Tibbetts' cell phone. Judge Robert Jordan ruled on Wednesday that the Chelan County Prosecutor's Office had not met its obligations for discovery, and any evidence gathered from the phone was inadmissible. At trial, both parties then agreed on Thursday to dismiss all eight criminal charges. Now the case could still be refiled against Tibbetts if new evidence emerges. A Chelan teenager pleaded guilty this week to setting that barn fire that injured a couple of sheriff's deputies last summer. You might remember this story. 18-year-old Connor Leo Strange entered a plea Wednesday to counts of first-degree arson and second-degree assault. Last July, Strange set a fire while hiding from police inside a barn in the Chelan Rodeo grounds, the heat and the gas has led to an explosion, and that left the Chelan County deputies with concussions. Strange himself suffered burns to his foot. Prosecutors say they'll ask for a low sentence due to his youth. He'll set, he's set to be sentenced two weeks from now. Faces a possible, possible five-year prison term. A bill that could make it easier to fund a regional sports complex here in the greater Wenatchee area has passed the Washington Senate. 12th District Senator Brad Hawkins sponsored Senate Bill 5001, and that allows communities to form a second public facilities district to underwrite such a project with voter approval. The bill passed Thursday unanimously, 45 to nothing, and now moves to the House. Valley leaders are exploring the idea of building a regional aquatic center near the Wenatchee Landing development. Investigators are seizing the financial records of those two massage parlors that uh, we talked about yesterday. They allegedly offered illicit sexual services. Chelan County Judge Travis Brandt approved orders to seize assets held at two banks where managers of the businesses deposited their profits. The Columbia River Drug Task Force served search warrants Wednesday on parlors allegedly operated by a Tacoma couple, Lin Wee Yan and Yan Yang. They say workers there were instructed to deposit earnings from sex work at two local bank branches. The Yans are both charged with organized crime, money laundering, and promoting prostitution. They have yet to be arrested. Police say they're probing the pair's operation of other massage locations in the Tri-Cities and in Tacoma. And finally, our friends at Eastmont High School, the students there have been working on some audio video equipment and software. They do their morning announcements now on video. They've been doing that at most of the local high schools 
lately. It's called the Wildcat Rundown, and they put together an exclusive video just for us. Check it out. Do you know what's happening at EHS? If you haven't checked out our Facebook or website, here's what you're missing out on. Welcome to the EHS Broadcast Media Team. We produce daily video reports that highlight events, activities, sports, clubs, and more. Our goal is to keep you informed on what's happening at EHS in an entertaining way. We do a lot of different things in this class, and we work hard to make sure our videos are informative and entertaining for all of our viewers. Some days we're super productive, but then obviously some days we might get a little off task. Watch him! Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, everyone. everyone. Hello, you're supposed to keep going. Oh. Back to the stew. It gets a little crazy, but we still get the videos done. Our team consists of writers, anchors, teleprompter operators, camera operators, editors, and directors who work together every day to create our Wildcat rundowns. Good morning, Wildcats. I'm Kendama. And I'm Sophisticated. And this is your Wildcat Rundown. In addition to producing daily videos for our website and social media pages, teachers also present the videos to their first period classes, so everyone can watch us. It's a great way for us to interact with other students while still getting information out there about what's going on at EHS. So if you want to stay up to date on everything happening at EHS, be sure to check out the Wildcat Rundowns on our website and social media pages. Back to the That's pretty cool. Future broadcast professionals who will hone their skills, get really good at their jobs, and then I'm out on my butt. We're going to have more of those from Eastmont over the next few weeks. And that's what's making news at 12 minutes after the hour. One more newscast before we get to call it a weekend with Grant and Eric and Jordan and not Cal. Cal's retired. Jefferson, I don't know. They work on the other side of the wall. Uh, with a preview of tonight's news, here's Grant. Good Friday morning, Dan. Coming up tonight on the NCW Life Evening News, possible snow in our forecast tonight and once again Saturday morning. I'll have all the details in your complete North Central Washington weather forecast. And in sports, Eric Granstrom has scores from state tournament basketball games, as well as results and highlights from the Kraken, Mariners, and Wenatchee Bighorns. That and all the day's news stories coming your way tonight at 5, 6, and 10 on the NCW Life Evening News. We hope to see you then. Dan? Thank you very much, Grant. Got a news tip? Get a hold of us. We'd love to hear from you right at the bottom of your screen. That's how you go about doing it. You can go to our Facebook page and drop us a note on the Messenger app. You can email us directly, news at ncwlife.com, or you can go to our homepage, too, if you so desire. When we come back, we've got lots of basketball to talk about, including the debut with the Wenatchee Bighorns. How do all the local teams do at the state tournament? We'll let you know with highlights there. Sports is one minute away. You're watching Wake Up in Anche Valley on the NCW Life channel. All paws on deck with Ryder and the crew as they set sail in an all-new live stage show. Paw Patrol Live, the great pirate adventure. X parks the spot in this exciting, action-packed live show full of singing, dancing, and patrolling the high seas. For more information on how to join the heroic pups, you can go to pawpatrollive.com. Playing Town Toyota Center March 21st and 22nd. For tickets, visit pawpatrollive.com. At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. Fifteen minutes after the hour, there are now two teams from our area that can still win a state championship after the uh, day, all the play yesterday at the WIA Hardwood Classic. We'll start out with Brewster. They're back in the state 2B semifinals, 71-61 over Napa Vine yesterday in the quarterfinals. The Bears' Brady Wolf, a one-man wrecking crew. Cross court, two shirt lead. Brady Wolf was wide open. Puts a shot up, Brady's shot goes in. Wolf knocks down another three ball, it's 10 to two. Bears Napa out on top. Napa Vine fought over the rebound. Certainly sends it to Wolf, Wolf for a three. Oh my goodness, Wolf knocks down his third tray. Down underneath the court, 
Court swings it out of there as Court hits the ground. Oh, my goodness, Brady Wolf knocks down his fourth tray in the first quarter by Kelly to send it over to Vassar. Vassar down the corner to Wolf for a three ball. Oh, my, Brady Wolf is knocking the bottom out of the bucket from three-point land. 56-54, Bears down by two. Wolf with it, working against Stanley, fires a three ball. That one, oh, my, I did not believe that ball was going to get there, and it didn't even touch the rim. Kelson just going to walk it up court. The Bears are going to win this one, 71-61. to And the Bears are guaranteed a trophy in the trophy round on Saturday. Nine three-pointers from Brady Wolf. He scored 30 points altogether. So the Bears will take on the winner of Lind Ritzville and Morton White Pass today at 530 in the semifinals. Lake Roosevelt dropped to the consolation bracket. They fall to, fell to Columbia Burbank in the quarterfinals, 82 to 53. The Raiders led 30 to 25 at halftime, but then the Coyotes came out with a flurry in the second half. They outscored them 30 to 12 in the third quarter. Chase Clark led Lake Roosevelt with 18 points. The Raiders will play Northwest Christian this morning at nine in a loser out game. J.C. Bozell scored 25 points to lead Okanagan girls to the semifinals of the state 2B tournament. They beat Mabton, no problems there, 87-60. to They will take on Napa Vine tonight at 9 o'clock. If they win, they will play for the state championship on Saturday night. Third-seeded DeSales made quick work of Moses Lake Christian in the quarterfinals of the state 1B boys tournament last night. 65-35, to the Lions will have to stay alive today at 2 o'clock. They'll take on Orcas Island. The Waterville Mansfield girls drop back to the consolation bracket. They lost to Mossy Rock in the quarterfinals, 61 to 24. Vikings held the Shockers to 13 total points in the second, third, and fourth quarters. Waterville Mansfield will play Colton this morning at 10:30 in a loser out game. The Cashmere girls hung tough with top-ranked Nusac Valley, then they faded down the stretch in the quarterfinals, 53 to 41. The final. The Bulldogs saw their lead disappear early in the fourth quarter. The Pioneers outscoring Cashmere 13 to six in the fourth quarter. Is going around the horn here. A little bit of a shell drill, four high or four low, I should say. Right side up and good to retake the lead for Nutsack. So one away from the bonus as well. Bjorklund has been a massive commodity. As there's a three-pointer from the corner, Kaylee Anderson, did you forget about her? Coppinger, jumper, good. Lady Bulldogs drop down to the consolation bracket. They will play Deer Park this morning at 9 a.m. 9 a.m., that's way too early to play a basketball game. Ah, what do I know? Washington State won its sixth straight conference game for the first time in 30 years. They beat the Dogs 93 to 84 in Seattle last night. TJ Bombay scored a career high 36 points. Andrew Yakimovsky added a double double for the Cougars with 12 points and a career best 17 rebounds. Eastern Washington is the Big Sky Conference tournament uh, in Boise this weekend. They'll uh, face the winner of Saturday's game between Idaho and Northern Arizona at 4:30. Washington State women's pulled off an upset. They beat number three Utah last night in the second round of the Pac-12 Women's Tournament, 66-58. Uh, Bella Murakateti led three players in double figures. She had 19. Washington State will take on 23-rated Colorado in the semis tonight at 8.30 on the Pac-12 Network. Haley Van Lith and her Louisville Cardinals are in the quarterfinals of the ACC Tournament. They'll take on Wake Forest this morning at 8 o'clock on the ACC Network. The Wenatchee Bighorns opened their inaugural season in the Basketball League last night. With a big victory over Vancouver, they were supposed to play Seattle, but instead the Volcanoes uh, were the Bighorns' first opponent. Good crowd on hand at the Town Toyota Center that cheer on the new home team. One twenty-nine to 65, the score clock at the Town Toyota Center doesn't even go to triple digits. Wenatchee's back at the Town Toyota Center Sunday. They'll take on Salem at 3 o'clock. 
Oliver Borkstrand's second goal of the night gave the Kraken a 5-4 overtime win over the Red Wings. Jared McCann and Jaden Schwartz helped give Seattle the lead early on. Red Wings tied it just before the end of regulation, and then it was on to overtime. Larkin, Raymond, and Sider. Two Wolverines on the draw, and Beneers and Larkin knock it aside, and Sider couldn't connect with Raymond. Justin Schultz for McCann. That missed the target. Bjorkstrand knocked it down. Time winding down on the power play for Seattle. Scores! Bjorkstrand let it go with a screen in front. And Seattle wins it in overtime. Yeah, glad they didn't have to skate very much in overtime because they had to hop on a plane. They make the short trip to Columbus. They'll take on the Blue Jackets today at 4 o'clock on Route Sports Northwest. Closer to home, the Wenatchee Wilds celebrate one of their biggest promotions this weekend. At the Town Toyota Center, it's Guns and Hoses Night. Tomorrow night, local police and firefighters will play hockey in a charity game at 4 o'clock. And that's followed by the Wild and the Chiefs at 6.05. Can't forget about the Mariners. They wanted walk-off fashion yesterday over the Padres. 5-4, to four, Eugenio Suarez and Cooper Hummel hit solo home runs during the Cactus League game in Peoria. And then Alberto Rodriguez came up with a game winner in the bottom of the ninth. The look in by Poppin, the right-handers pitch, swung on, well hit ball to right field. This one is going to be off the base of the wall. Polkovich the third being waved in by Manny. The throw-in is cut off. The relay to the plate, Polkovich slides. He's safe and the ball game is over. Alberto Rodriguez with a double down the right field line, scoring Caden Polkovich all the way from first. And the Mariners come from behind and beat the Padres this afternoon. A final score of 5-4, to four, a comeback win here in Peoria. Next up, uh, the Diamondbacks in Scottsdale today. First pitch at 12-10. And those are just some of the games that people are playing on this Friday, the third day of March. Uh, for the obscure holiday, I had five, count them five I could have chosen. Uh, today is World Wildlife Day. That's such a big subject. I decided to pass on that. Today is National I Want You to Be Happy Day. Today is National Cold Cuts Day. Today is National Mold Wine Day. But no, we're going to celebrate Employee Appreciation Day today. And as I started doing the research on this, I, you know, I, I think we're all familiar with the great resignation, all of these people who voluntarily quit their jobs during the pandemic and then shortly thereafter. And that's uh, people who voluntarily quit. Employee turnover. I thought, okay, what industries have big employee turnover? I quit, I'm gonna go someplace else. And which industries and jobs, not so much? People who work for the federal government like it, only 18% of federal government workers will quit their job for another job. In the world of education, specifically teachers, about 25% of teachers will quit their jobs for another job. Uh, at 40% healthcare professionals, specifically CNAs, registered nurses, long-term caregivers, people like that. About 40% of people who work in that industry will quit their job for another job. Construction turnover rate, I quit. 57% of people who work in construction will quit their job for another job. 64% of people who work in retail will quit their job. It can be stressful. You have to deal with a lot of people every day and you gotta feel good about it. I can understand that. But number one, and I'm not surprised about this when I thought about it, 86% of people who work in food services, waiters, waitresses, bartenders, cooks of any kind, 86% will quit their job for another job. Uh, number one reason, more pay. Also, better work environment, the ability to advance, paid medical leave, and better personal life, work-life balance. Thought I'd throw that out there on Employee Appreciation Day today. It's 25 minutes after the hour. Today in history, another state celebrates its birthday today. That's the state flag of Florida. Florida joined the Union March 3rd, 1845. That makes Florida 178 years old today. Fun facts about Florida. Florida, of course, is the only place on the planet where crocodiles and alligators coexist together on the same real estate. Approximately nine people a year are killed by lightning in Florida, almost all of it in central Florida. They are well known for their late afternoon thunderstorms in Florida. 
Florida state law requires that all public buildings that the entryways, the doors must open outward. They cannot open inward, and there's a good reason for that. Hurricanes. Doors that open in, the hurricanes have much better odds of busting into your, your place of business or the other way around. Uh, the state song of Florida is Old Folks at Home, and for obvious reasons, 17% of uh, everybody who lives in Florida is 65 or older. Big surprise there. And uh, about two-thirds, 66% of the people who live in Florida were not born in Florida. Second highest percentage of any state. That's amazing. About two-thirds of the population of Florida was born someplace else. What's the number one state? Think about it for just a little bit. Makes obvious sense if you think about it. Nevada. 76% of the people who live in Nevada weren't born in Nevada. I guess that makes sense. Happy birthday to Florida. Happy birthday to the national anthem. It's hard to believe, but the Star Spangled Banner didn't become the national anthem of this country until 1931, 92 years ago today. Now you would think, wait a minute, it was written by Francis Scott Key 100 years or more before that. But we didn't actually have an official national anthem. They were considering others. My personal choice would have been America the Beautiful. The national anthem, and I, I get in trouble with this. We've heard it, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of times in our lifetime. And so it's just ingrained in our brain. But I'm a music person. It's my passion. And, and the Star Spangled Banner, musically speaking, sucks. It just, it's, a, it's a bad song. For one thing, the melody is British. It's not even American. It's an old British drinking song. Anyway, what happened? How did the Star Spangled Banner eventually become the national anthem after being played at military things for many, many, many decades? Two things, the Olympics and baseball. In the Olympics, when you win a gold medal, they play your country's national anthem when they raise the flag. And Hello, uh, United States, this is Olympics. What's your national anthem? Oh, we don't have one. Okay, we'll play the Star Spangled Banner. And of course, the other thing is baseball. Playing the Star Spangled Banner before the baseball games. Anyway, happy birthday to the Star Spangled Banner. Sorry about my little rant on our national anthem. I just don't think it's a very good song. There are others that are a lot better. Speaking of songs that are really good, maybe Rocket 88 should be the national anthem. Rock and Roll Baby, Rocket 88 by Jackie Brinson uh, with Ike Turner's great band was recorded at Sam Phillips' Sun Record Studios on this date in 1951, 72 years ago today. The song rocks, it cooks, it may very well be the first rock and roll song, baby. Rock it 88, play it loud. And finally, 32 years ago today, not gonna show you the video. You've seen it. Don't need to show you the video. An amateur video shot by George Holliday captures the beating of Rodney King by Los Angeles police officers. That process began on this date in 1991. Made a lot of people think, wow, if that's on videotape, how many times have LA County sheriffs and LA police officers been beating people up without us even knowing about it? Let's do birthdays, just one. It's a heavenly birthday, it's a big one. Alexander Graham Bell, his wife was deaf, his mother was deaf, and so all the men in the Bell family, almost from their childhood, were obsessed with sound and hearing and how elocution works and how speech works. And one thing led to another and Alexander Graham Bell began to tinker in his laboratory, came up with hearing devices. Finally, of course, was awarded the first patent for the first telephone. By the way, he didn't like the telephone. For the guy who invented the telephone, he thought it was an intrusion and he never had one in his office. <laughs> The guy who invented the telephone didn't use the telephone. Alexander Graham Bell, born this date in 1847. Bottom of the hour, still to come an opinion from Mike Mad Dog McNaughty. We're talking Apple Sox baseball and baseball in general with Mitch Darlington, the head coach of the Wenatchee Apple Sox, who are building the roster for we hope to be a great 2023 campaign. That's coming up as well. But first things first, we didn't do it yesterday, doing it today. Clara the dog needs a home. It's Paws for Pets. My name is Haley, and I'm with the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society, and with me this week is Clara. Clara came in as a stray originally, and 
Since then, um, she has been a favorite among the volunteers who walk her. She's so easy. When she goes on walks, she wants to carry her stuffies with her, and it's real cute just to see her walking along the trail with a stuffy in her mouth. Um, they're like her babies. She is so easy going. She's very quiet in her kennel, very clean in her kennel. She really likes human attention. As you can see, she's leaning on in for pets and loves right now. And she's just one of the nicest girls that we have right now. Um, I will say that she can't go to another home with dogs. Um, we've tried introducing her into playgroup and she just isn't a fan of other animals. So she would need to be your one and only. If you want to meet Clara, you can come on down to the shelter. Um, we're open every day except Wednesday. And we're open 11 to 6 and we're closed 1.30 to 2.30 for quiet time. Give them a call at 509-662-9577 or visit their website at WenatchieHumane.org. Central Washington Water is your solution for problem water. Whether you're on a well or municipal water, they can design a clean water system custom to you. Soft water eliminates water spots and scaling on fixtures. It protects appliances from hard water damage, saving you money. Soft water reduces soap usage that causes skin irritation and is a healthier choice to drink. Call for a free in-home consultation or stop by the store to have your water tested. Central Washington Water, your best water solution for home, pool, and spa. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? And what would it be like? With today's home values, this is the perfect time to sell and make those dreams real. When you work with a world-class agent at Coldwell Banker, you benefit from trusted guidance and a revolutionary seller's assurance program to make your home sale more rewarding than ever. So it really is true. Your dreams don't have to be just dreams. Boating in the Wenatchee Valley starts at Bob File Boats and Motors. Now you can fish like a pro without breaking the bank thanks to the ProMag Aluminum Fishing Boat by Smokercraft. It features a great layout with a spacious bow casting platform, huge live wells, and in-floor storage to safely stow your gear. See the Smokercraft line of boats at Bob File Boats and Motors on Sunset Highway in East Wenatchee or online at BobFile.com. Bob File Boats and Motors, we're dealing. Bob File's gonna make you smile. When you call Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, you're calling on 35 plus years of experience in the Wenatchee Valley. Spending extra time in your home, you may have discovered an unwanted aroma. Stinky feet, pets, who knows what. Call Dick's today about installing their Train Clean Effects Electronic Air Cleaner or a Ream Halo Ultraviolet Air Purifier. Either way, the air quality in your home will be improved. Proudly servicing all of North Central Washington, call 884-6444 today. I'm Brian Thorpe, and I'm proud to say that Global Car Care is growing. We always do the right thing, and because of that, we're busy, and it's time to hire an experienced automotive technician. We spend as much time with our coworkers as we do our own family. I want them to understand they're not a number here. They're a person with a family, and I want them to be part of this family too. Do you want an owner that understands and respects what you do every day? I'm that guy. Our compensation is the best in the area. I want you to have your career with us. Did you know that nearly 50% of pet poisoning cases involve human medications and prescription drugs? Sometimes the culprit's a curious dog, but cats get into their share of trouble as well. Other times, pet owners mistakenly give their pets their own medications that are safe to people but toxic to their pets. Dr. Shauna Bayes and her staff care about your pets. Go to pawsandclawsvh.com for a complete list of medications to avoid or call 888-PAWS. Everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, Liz Cheney said something scary after her defeat in the recent primary due to her refusal to drink the personality called Kool-Aid of Don Donald Trump. For her voting to impeach Trump, despite the personal loss that caused her, I give her high marks in integrity. However, the scary thing is she said that it might take several election cycles for things to straighten out. And let's hope this Democratic Republican weather that storm. 
This is Mike Madagnati, and that's my opinion. You've got a lot to do today. While you're out and about, remember to dispose of your unused medications safely and anonymously. It's a simple act that makes your home a safer place. Next time you're at the pharmacy, just place them in the drop box. To find a location, visit medproject.org. All paws on deck as Ryder and the crew set sail in Paw Patrol Live, the great pirate adventure. For more information, you can go to pawpatrollive.com. Playing Town Toyota Center, March 21st and 22nd. For tickets, visit pawpatrollive.com. Or you can win a family four-pack. All you have to do is go to the original children's shop in downtown Wenatchee and get signed up. It's a $106 value. The original children's shop, downtown Wenatchee. Get there, get signed up, and win. At D.A. Davidson in Wenatchee, they believe your investment success begins with a personalized plan. A plan that is the roadmap you need to navigate your way to living your best years in retirement. D.A. Davidson can help you create a plan so you can take the time to enjoy the finer things in life. Let the financial advisors at D.A. Davidson help chart your retirement future today. 1989, I moved here in July. My dad farmed, my, my brother's still on the family farm. I worked for a dealer in Liston, Idaho. I was his general sales manager. My boss goes, I got a guy that may be ready for a store. We made one trip here and that's how I ended up here. I'd never been here in my life and I had no friends here. I have nothing, you know. I do now, I have a lot of friends here. I mean, this is my home. I love living here. Badger Mountain Brewery is your cure for boredom. Jam Night Mondays. Trivia Wednesdays. Live Music Fridays. And Sunday Brunch. There's always something brewing at Badger Mountain. So come join the party. March is a food and wine lover's dream in Chelan. Presented by Lake Chelan Wine Valley. Taste Chelan celebrates food and wine all March long. Created to tickle your taste buds. Experience a food and wine tour happening every Saturday with special offers all month long. Local wineries select their most tantalizing varietals paired and curated with food from local restaurants, chefs, and culinary artisans. Taste Chelan. It'll bring out the foodie in you. Buy tickets now by visiting tastechelan.com. It's cold, it's still winter, it sucks, but let's hang on to a little bit of something that we can hang on to, and that's baseball, specifically Apple Sox baseball. They're getting ready to fire up their 2023 season. Made the playoffs last year under the second year leadership of the head coach of the Apple Sox, heading into his third year. He's a friend of our program, Mitch Darlington. <laughs> oh, they love you, my friend. Right, right. How are you? Good, good. I'm over I, gotta, here. I feel like I got to correct you already, but I'm heading into my second year. Second not, year? Last okay. year was the first year. That's so. right. Well, you were in danger of getting your ass fired, so I didn't want to. <laughs> we're kidding. I love you, buddy. I was on the hot seat early on, so. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? What do you, let's, dis, let's dispense with some, uh, some myths and misconceptions. Uh, yeah, the season ended. We made the playoffs. It was a beautiful, wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. You took some time off with your family, your wife, and your kid, and you did that stuff. But you're, you're, you're still Apple Sox most of the time aren't you yeah yeah um you know even in the off season doing recruiting and phone calls and um you know when i'm not on the phone i'm probably thinking about baseball or talking to my wife about baseball and driving her nuts so 
uh, yeah, Apple Sox 24-7, basically. Let's talk about the recruiting process. We're going to talk about Hunter, Jack, and, and Brandon here in just a little bit, three returners. Coming back, uh, folks who follow the Apple Sox will know those three guys. Talk about the recruiting process. That was a lot of little phone calls. Hey, we're thinking about you. You know, we're, we're, we're here when you're ready, that kind of stuff. Walk me through that. Yeah, this year, um, you know, was a lot easier as opposed to last year. When I first got hired, it felt like, you know, I was the one kicking in doors and, you know, sending, um, you know, emails or cold calls and just reaching out to as many schools as possible, trying to get players. Um, but with the success we had last summer, um, and some of the guys that returned back to school and had positive things to say about us. Um, I actually received quite a few phone calls from those schools. You know, UC Irvine, for example, where Joichiro Oyama played. Um, you know, they called a couple weeks after the season and said, hey, we loved, you know, we loved what you did with Joe, and well, let's get a couple more guys out there to you. So um, the recruiting process was easier from that standpoint. But yeah, you know, most of it is um, not me contacting individual players. Most of it is me um, calling coaches or them calling me and us talking about, you know, the right fit for us and what position spots we have available and, you know, and that sort of a thing. Is Wenanchi uh, a pretty easy sell, all things considered? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, obviously the history with the Apple Sox and what Nags had previously built, um, a, lot, a lot of Division One schools know who the Apple Sox are and, you know, we've always had quality host parents and good facilities and just a, a stable organization. So uh, it makes it easier definitely to recruit. And Jose Oglesby, the owner of the Apple Sox, has done his part mm -hmm. to, to help these. He understands that these guys who want to move as far up the baseball ladder as possible. And he, is, uh, he has embraced all of the latest that baseball has to offer from a technological standpoint. Jose has given them the tools and you the tools. Yep, yep. So obviously getting the new scoreboard here a few years ago, um, but Jose's also been, you know, willing to foot the bill on, you know, track man and drive line and any, any sort of technology advantage we can get. Um, so it, it makes it fun for a lot of our guys to be able to, um, you know, see their velo immediately after a game and see their stats immediately after a game or, you know, hit or see exit velocity off the bat on certain pitches. So. Uh, Jose's been great as far as that stuff goes. And it paid off last year with, it, with a playoff appearance, first time in a number of years. Uh, mm -hmm. Playoffs are good. And uh, that, a lot of that had to do, the, the guys were playing good, solid, competitive baseball at the end of the season. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that's a testament to a lot of different things. Um, Jose and Allie and um, our assistants doing a great job. You know, Vaughn did a great job with our pitchers last year. And Marcus Leiden did a great job with our hitters. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of the perfect storm last summer where guys bought in and um, they, they came out here and had an expectation to win every night and kind of got hot there at the end and made a little playoff push and we're hoping to build on that this next year. Well, three guys have bought in already and we'll start in order. We'll start with uh, Hunter Gibson. Uh, his arm is coming back. There he is. He has decided to return. Talk a little bit about, uh, about, about Hunter. He was in 10 games last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the big thing with Hunter, uh, I can't remember the exact stats, but I think he had like 27 punch outs and only five walks on the season. Um, really he's going to come in and attack hitters. Uh, really just a, I say bulldog mentality. He's an Ellensburg bulldog kid. So um, just a competitor on the bump. Um, and the other thing with him was last spring at Big Bend, you know, he had ran into a little bit of arm trouble. So last summer, he was kind of rehabbing that injury and just coming slowly back into it. Um, so I think our fans and, and, you know, from my perspective, we're going to see a different kid on the bump this summer. We're going to see a kid that's got a full spring at Big Bend in um, under his belt, and he's going to be uh, um, ready to go. Uh, Jack Moffat, again, another arm returning. Um, he he was, spent the entire year last year with the Apple Sox. He is certainly no stranger to this organization. Right, right. Yeah, Jack. Uh, Jack's one of those that he got better from his first outing on. He was always in a starter role for us. Um, you know, really heavy fastball, can run it up to 94. Um, and for him, it was just finding that consistency. He was just kind of an up and down kid. Um, had some really good outings, and then had some. You know, had a couple stinkers there in the middle of the summer. But uh, I think another year under his belt at Gonzaga. Uh, working with their pitching coach Brandon Harmon, I think they're going to clean clean up a little bit of his secondary pitches, and and he's just going to be more polished and ready to go for us. So, 
Uh, I'm excited about him. He, he started our North Division Championship game and threw a complete, uh, complete gem for us, man. I think he went six innings and uh, one earned run. And so his best outing of the summer, he finished strong. So, To be an effective pitcher nowadays, you have to have at least three pitches you can throw consistently for strikes. The old just rear back and throw as hard as you can are those days gone. You got to have at least three. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. you hear that. Yeah, I feel like from a starter's perspective, probably, you know, you got to locate multiple pitches for strikes. Um, you know, as you get later into the game, you know, if you got a guy that can really run it up there and, um, you know, just has a good secondary pitch, you can you can use him as a closer. A guy like Reese Leitenberg last summer for us, really heavy fastball, and then just had a great changeup, and that was that was all he threw. So. You know, not a long inning guy that you're going to be able to get six innings out of with only two pitches, but definitely a guy that can come in later in the game and, and get through the lineup one time. It's fun to watch guys who have a great changeup because the batters just fall all over themselves. <laughs> like it's just, just, right. They're hitting their shoe tops. Uh, Mr. Ponce, a position player, he's back as well. Yep, Brandon Ponce. Yeah, we're, we're excited to get him back. Um, funny stat about him, he had five homers on the season last summer, and all five came at home and so it felt like every time he was in the lineup at home he was going to run a ball out of the yard and uh, I think our fans remember his infectious smile and um, he was just a gamer man. He's a great player and uh, I'm excited to see what he does this spring with the Cougs before he comes back here. And Paul Thomas Senior Stadium is not a hitter's ballpark. It's, no. it's considered a pitcher's ballpark and if he can jack the ball over the fence there then you're, you're hitting the ball with a pretty good hunk of steam. Right, right. Yeah, a ton of raw power and uh, plays a good third base. Um, we moved him around actually a little bit last summer. Had him at first base, had him in the corner outfield. So. You know, from my perspective, having a guy that can play three or four different positions um, makes it a lot easier when you're writing a lineup card. And uh, a couple of new coaches. We'll talk about the one who I bothered to download a photo of. Uh, the uh, the uh, pitching coach for the um, for the uh, for, for the Knights. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about Colton here. Yep. So Colton Kelly, he's an assistant uh, at Wenatchee Valley College. Um, this is his first season with Wenatchee Valley. Um, so a good hire by Vaughn, who was previously at Skagit Valley College. Uh, he actually grew up in Moses Lake, and uh, he was just graduating when I was playing at Big Bend Community College in Moses Lake. So kind of knew who he was, and you know th things have kind of come full circle now. And he's in Wenatchee and coaching there. And um, you know we lost Marcus Leiden. He unfortunately had to move on. He's trying to open a facility back at Oregon, and so this worked out great having Colton come join us. And I, I think he's going to do a great job. Pitching coach at this level, just make sure you stick with your mechanics and don't hurt yourself. Is that is that really? I mean, you're not trying to teach a kid a screwball or, right. or this, that, and the other thing. You're just making sure they don't screw up. I yeah. Guess. Is that is that more? Yeah, of a lot of a lot of just tinkering with guys. You know, giving tips here and there. Um, but a lot of it is also managing a pitching staff. So. Um, you know, trying to trying to figure out what these guys who are not starting that day or not pitching that day, you know, running them through a program, some arm care stuff, and, and just basically keeping them fresh and ready for when they are going to pitch is, is a big part of it. So th those are the three commits. There are more coming. Yep. Uh, we kind of they're we're kind of drip drip dripping it out, so we can we can tease you a little bit. Um, you had a good year last year. You were uh, this team, especially at the end of the year. This Apple Sox team kind of came together, made the playoffs. You got to be feeling pretty good coming into the 2023 campaign. Yeah, yeah. No, we're, we're excited to build upon uh, what we did last summer. You know, it's a little different with summer baseball because, you know, it's not like a true program where you're bringing back everybody and building upon the success. Um, you know, you never know what you're going to get with your, these new guys that are coming in. Um, but I think having a good core of guys like Brandon Ponce and uh, Jack Moffitt and some of those guys who know that Wenatchee isn't just some place where we roll the balls out and say, hey, here we go, let's go play baseball. Um, the fact that we, we preach winning and we're here to try to compete for championships, um, I think that's really important to have those guys returning and, and kind of set the tone for the, the other guys that are coming in. I would be remiss, uh, Mitch, if I didn't ask you about what's going on at Major League Baseball. Slightly bigger bases, the shift mm -hmm. is banned. The pitch clock, <laughs> the pitch clock uh, yeah. these things. 
you're a bit of a purist. Where are you with this? <laughs> I uh, I'll be honest. I I don't love it. I don't love the pitch the pitch clock. Um, I think we're tailoring the game a little too much for the casual fan. Um, you're either going to be a fan of baseball or you're not, and it's kind of taken away some of those things of, you know, pitchers stepping off the rubber and resetting themselves, or you know, the limits on mound visits or catchers coming out to get on the same page with their pitcher. Um, yeah, I, I just don't love it. I, I, I think there's the true baseball fans, and we'll, we'll bring in some more fans slowly, but we can't tailor our game to, to try to speed everything up and get more fans to the game. I, I agree with you, and I'm, a, I'm such a purist that it took me forever to get used to the designated hitter. So as I was concerned, the nine guys who play in the field or the nine guys who hit, what do I know? It's been around for 50 years. To me, the biggest change is, is the shift. Mm -hmm. As far as I'm concerned, a coach could be able to play his nine players wherever the hell he wants to in the field. Right. From a strategic advantage, and that's the one thing. That, I don't mind the bigger bases and in, in so much in that. But the shift, why, why ban the shift? Why can't you play where you want to? Yeah, that's, that, that's, <laughs> that's I mean, a tough one as well. It's like you almost want to just you know, teach your guys to hit the other way. If you're a left-handed batter and you're just dead pull, I don't know. We should be able to shift you and make you bunt or make you hit it the other way and... Unfortunately, again, they, they don't really like to see the shift, and so they're changing the rules a little bit. Any talk in the league about tweaking the rules on that thing? Where are we rules-wise going into 2023? Anything different that we need to know about? I, I believe the pitch clock is still kind of up for debate in the West Coast League. Uh, talking with Jose, it sounds like there's a chance that we see that um, just because the NCAA baseball's going to include it this year. So... Um, We'll see. I, I, I don't know. After a full spring of college baseball, if they decide they don't like it, I'd love to see them just kind of keep it out of the West Coast League. But, you know, we won't know until uh, June rolls around what exactly we're doing. One sound you will never hear ever, ever in the West Coast League is an aluminum bat hitting a baseball. That won't change. This is a wood bat league. It's going to stay a wood bat league. Yep, yep. I, hopefully forever. Yep. Mitch Darlington, the head coach of the Wenatchee Apple Sox. Uh, go to their website. Check it out. As more and more players are introduced, some returning and some new players as well, we'll have Mitch on uh, exactly uh, as many times as we can. Real quickly, Mitch, while I have you here, uh, you're the uh, athletic director up there at Waterville Mansfield School District. You're a girls basketball team uh, off to Spokane. A, a good year for the, for the ladies up there. Yeah, yeah. They had a great, great uh, season. They took second in the league and then uh, managed, managed to win the district championship here at Wenatchee last weekend. Um, so yeah, they're heading to Spokane on Wednesday. They'll play Yakima Tribal. So I'm really excited to see what kind of uh, tournament run they can go on. It's Mitch Darlington, everybody. Give him a big hand. <laughs> good to see you, my friend. Yeah, good Say to see you. Say hi to Jose and Allie and, uh, and Joel and everybody, and, and uh, we get to see you real soon, all right? Yep, a few more months here. Yeah, I hope so, my friend. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley. We'll be right back. Pause on deck as Ryder and the crew set sail in Paw Patrol Live, the great pirate adventure. For more information, you can go to pawpatrollive.com. Playing Town Toyota Center, March 21st and 22nd. For tickets, visit pawpatrollive.com. Or you can win a family four-pack. All you have to do is go to the original children's shop in downtown Wenatchee and get signed up. It's a $106 value. The original children's shop, downtown Wenatchee. Get there, get signed up, and win. Are you caught in a conflict with a family member, in the workplace, or with a neighbor or business? Wenatchee Valley Dispute Resolution Center provides mediation services, a cost-effective and efficient way to provide a written resolution to disputes and issues. Plus, we offer mediation training and community education on topics like conflict resolution and communication skills. Contact us at 509-888-0957 or www.wvdrc.org to learn more. Introducing Alpine Airman. Because every home needs a superhero to eliminate poor indoor air quality, send inefficient operating equipment packing, and cut high energy bills down to size. For heating or cooling and equipment replacement, turn to the experts and the superheroes at Carrier and Alpine Air. We offer the best deals on high efficiency Carrier products, along with friendly, knowledgeable service and incredible savings to fit your budget.
We were in Roseburg in the early 80s. Our oldest son, Dan, was a defensive back, a starter on that team. They set, in fact, became Oregon State champions, setting the first undefeated 14-0 season in Oregon's history. And a lot of people were losing jobs. Friends had left the community. It was a hard time. That football team and companies like Abby's kept that place alive and the community spirit alive. That's legendary. Lots of sunshine, a little on the cool side, 28 degrees now here in downtown Wenatchee. Don't get used to the sun, not going to be sticking around for a while. The clouds will be thickening up as the day progresses. It'll be mostly cloudy by the time you're done with the day. Cloudy all weekend, rain and snow, uh, the possibility is there. Cooler than normal temperatures. All of those forecast details are coming up. We got a little uh, housekeeping to do, though, first of all. A couple of days ago, we were just sitting around the bullpen. Uriah and I are the only ones here for the first you know, two hours or so, we get the whole place to ourselves. And looking at the PTZ cameras, and the sun was just starting to climb up above the Billy Goat camera area up there in uh, Okanagan County. And so uh, Uriah did a little time lapse. This is sunrise from, I believe, Wednesday morning. Check this out. Pretty darn cool. That it was just a perfect timing with the the sun, where the sun was coming up. There was no clouds, and they had high clouds above it. That peach salmon colored sky it was gorgeous up there. That's why the Billy Goat camera is one of my favorites, indeed. Uh, real quickly on the passes, uh, in just about oh, two minutes or so, they're going to shut down uh, Stevens Pass at the summit. US two Stevens. They're going to be doing some avalanche control work. They've been getting a lot of snow, and I, and I can't even begin to emphasize how much snow they've been getting on US-2 over the last 30 hours or so, so much so that plows can't keep up with it. So they're going to close down Stevens Pass uh, at the summit, that four or five mile stretch on either side, and they're doing avalanche control work. It starts at 8 o'clock this morning. Avalanche control work, you know what happens. Uh, it depends exactly how much snow comes down from the slopes onto the highway, and then they got to clean it all out. So there's no real hard reopening time on Stevens Pass, but if, uh, if you're heading now, you're probably going to get stopped. In the meantime, Blewett is okay. Blewett's fine. It's pretty much bare and wet. Lots of sunshine in US-97 Blewett, but then you get to I-90 and it's bad. It is a chain requirement uh, both directions on I-90 unless you have all-wheel drive, and as I look at the camera at the summit of Snoqualmie Pass, it's snowing hard, and they're going to get snow all day today. In fact, here is your weekend outlook from the National Weather Service. No big surprise here. Uh, all through the weekend, uh, there's going to be some snow along the Cascade Crest, lots of snow along the Ca Cascade Crest. Stevens, uh, about three to seven inches of additional snow today. That's after the two feet of snow they've gotten over the last couple of days. Stevens is gonna get two to four more inches tonight before things calm down a little bit there. I-90 is gonna get uh, about seven inches of snow today as well, and then about three inches of snow tonight. And it uh, dries out a little bit. Blue it is not going to get a lot of snow today, but they're going to get quite a bit of snow on Saturday. All weekend long, you're going to find winter driving conditions in the Cascades as far as the valley and the lower elevations are concerned. Cooler than normal temperatures, and yeah, a snowflake cannot be ruled out. From Apple Valley Honda and the National Weather Service, increasing clouds for the course of the day today. A couple of stray snowflakes or raindrops is possible. High 44, normal high 48. That's what we hit yesterday. Also a little windy at times. For uh, Saturday, a chance of light snow in the morning, a rain-snow mix in the afternoon. We're only going to get to 40 degrees, about a 30% chance of something coming out of the sky. And our best chance of actual measurable snow is going to be late Saturday night into early Sunday morning. You can wake up Sunday morning with a couple of inches of snow on the floor right here in the big city with a high of 37. So the cool down continues and no real sunshine in the forecast. Sorry. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. Bye-bye.